You need the mic. Okay. Turn it on then. All right. Ooh, God. So I'm fortunate enough to have met a lot of physicians who are interested in bridging that gap between their world and ours. And I've had the opportunity to work with them in the past. We did some research in the past, uh, DEF CON 22, I think, on 911 security, presented on that, and continue to work through things like I Am the Cavalry to talk about healthcare and information security. And that's been awesome. Ryan and I have a, a shared background in that we both went to the Air Force Academy. We both did space and missiles and some other stuff. And he came to me with the idea of this application and this concept. And we said, heck, let's run with it. So we did this part. Okay, uh, I already covered most of this. I was just trying to fill up and make sure you guys have some idea what we're talking about. Uh, do you want me on a mic? Yeah. This is annoying. I know. Um, if, if I don't face the camera, is that okay? Yes. <laughs> okay, so um, just to reiterate, it seems like we're all familiar with this technology, so let's press, let's get right into it. Uh, slide? That's me. That's, that's <laughs> Oh no, I'll take this. So over the last, um, I mean these are, these are pretty current, six months, seven months, we've just seen hack after hack. Uh, so this is something we were trying to address with this sort of uh, uh, relatively simple system for protecting our healthcare records, um, our healthcare transactions, our healthcare um, communication. Um, this is going to happen again. This is going to continue happening. Um, and one of these days it's gonna hit a system that everyone uses like Epic or Cerner. Anyone familiar with Epic or Cerner in here? Okay, good, very good. Okay, uh, and when that happens, I mean, there, it's, it's gonna be a shit storm. I, I mean, there's really nothing you can do because there's, there's no redundant comm built in. There's no, th there's no plan B. Um, this system, TriGraph, what we're building now, is not gonna be that plan B yet, but we hope that in the future, this or something like it will be. Um, so this is just the, the scare tactics to keep you engaged. Next slide. All right, so, uh, yes. This is the obligatory legal language that we have to provide that was developed by trained ninja JD monkeys. Um, here, this is just to reflect that this is not necessarily the opinions or the language, verbiage, opinions, uh, commentary associated with our employers. Um, his, uh, whether it be the, the medicine field, um, yeah, he's still technically in the Air Force and he's in the medicine field. He's not gonna provide any medical uh, advice here, anyhow. Oh, and patent pending, the work we've done here. All right, so this is objective. <laughs> we did ask for a second microphone. Do we have enough cable to do this or what? Okay. All right, so long term, we want to improve access to physician care. I mean, that's, that's the big takeaway here. Um, and finally, we think that going forward, medicine is going to have to become more collaborative. Raise your hand if you've been on WebMD. I know, I know you all have. You've all had some weird sore. Yeah. I know you all have something little itchy. It's Vegas. You're, you're gross. <laughs> um, yeah. So uh, we think that it'll be helpful to be able to speak over a secure, anonymous platform and say, hey, man, I got this thing going on. Kind of like what you have on WebMD right now, except with someone that you know is a physician because they've been credentialed uh, through the blockchain, through a token, uh, to, to know that. Uh, next slide. Longer term, and this is what I alluded to earlier, um, right now we have a functional POC, we're gonna show you that today. Um, it's sped up though, yeah. so don't think we're cheating. It takes longer than a minute to do this. It takes like six minutes to do this, which is still pretty good, we thought. Um, so these are the, the key tenets I want you to keep in mind as we go through this. Uh, the one I didn't mention was auditability. So for anything medical records, you have to be able to know who looked at what what they saw, and you know, if they had a reason for doing this. Um, a blockchain will keep track of the externals, so you'll know that physician X talked to patient Y, maybe some sort of content. I guess with the contract on Ethereum, you'll know that it was something about, uh, I think I maybe broke this bone or something. Um, but you won't have the internals, so there's still privacy, uh, we, we hope, we think, at play, although we're, we are looking to you guys to help pick this apart. Uh, next slide. So why Ethereum? Um, you know, it, it's kind of a, a, you know, a poor man's crypto. We can do a lot of stuff with this, with the blockchain. Uh, it'll cost a little bit of money, but even more importantly, what we're up against is, is frankly way too expensive to begin with. I mean, a PAX system is millions a year and it's proprietary. Oh, and there's a talk on Sunday. I don't know who's giving it, but uh, I think they're gonna discuss the security. Any chance he or she's in here? No? Okay, well, they're gonna, hopefully talk about all the, the vulnerabilities and PAC systems that already exist. Um, additionally, 
healthcare, the, the costs have become just non-transparent. I mean, we, we think we're over $100 to read a, an x-ray. An MRI is probably more, probably a couple hundred dollars. Um, but frankly, that's, that's already too expensive, and uh, we think we can do better. We know we can do better. Uh, the, the payment system's already built in, as long as your physician's willing to accept Ethereum. Who, here, who in here takes Ethereum? I think it took a nosedive the last few weeks. Who lost thousands? Yeah, yeah, sorry, buddy. <laughs> Um, and then uh, identity management, this is where we really think this could catch on um, because how do you know who you're talking to? How do you know that this is a physician? Um, especially if you can de-identify it enough to know that, well, I don't know the physician's name, but I know that he's credentialed to this level, even if he or she is living in India or even if he or she is living uh, you know, in Chile or something, uh, which can also help for 24-7 access to these kinds of uh, medical services. And finally, reputation management. We're not here yet, but we envision something along the lines of an Uber-type rating system, which is difficult because you might not like what you hear from the physician. Yes, you do have herpes. I'm sorry. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, we're, we're hoping that someday we can put together something that allows us to know that this physician who is credentialed and operating on this, this particular system is not full of shit. Um, that's kind of we, what we want to get to. Uh, you're getting. So when you're getting feedback from a physician on an image that you're providing to them, you want to make sure you're getting timely feedback, you're getting cost-effective feedback, and that it's detailed enough that you can take it and provide it to maybe your primary care provider, or you get enough input on it to say, yes, this is a broken, or yeah, that probably is what you think it is, that's whore. Slide. Slide. <laughs> oh. All right, so this is me. So this is the, the architecture, what we designed um, to get this done. And on the left-hand side, you've got the patient, and on the right-hand side, you've got a physician. And originally, when we were talking about this and designing it in our heads, TriGraph was the concept of the patient, the blockchain, and the doctor. And then we got to the point where we said, hey, you know what, we probably don't want to store imagery on the blockchain. That would be annoying for everybody. Um, so we didn't. We ended up using uh, an external data store. And the external data store is depicted on the top. We've implemented that in the proof of concept using Django. Um, and that's just basically an API that's sending information back and forth. In the design phase when we were looking at this, it was very important to us that we implement it such that if the data store were compromised, none of the patient information, specifically the imagery, would be recoverable. So what is passed up there is public keys and encrypted image data, and that's it. Um, as far as the, the patient interaction with the blockchain, that's something where they're sending the payment, right? They're paying the physician for that image read. They're paying the physician for that opinion. Um, they're starting the contract and they're pushing state changes. The physician is also pushing state changes, which we'll get to here in a moment. And then the payment at the end goes to that happy physician in the lower right to say, yeah, that doesn't look good. All right, so when we designed the proof of concept, this was what we actually implemented in our network for testing. Um, you can see basically it's a summary of it all and this is truly uh, a mesh network with uh, the Geth or the, the Go-based Ethereum clients talking to each other. But here what you've got is you've got at the top the dedicated blockchain nodes that are operating the blockchain. They're the ones that are doing the mining and the mining is required so that we can keep the transactions moving along. On the lower hand side, this was our implementation in the proof of concept to say we have an arbitrary patient client, we have an arbitrary doctor client, and we have the data store. And the data store was the implementation of that Django app that we were talking about. All of those three are interfacing through Web3, uh, a Python uh, library, into the Go Ethereum client via RPC to the Go Ethereum client and then talks on the blockchain. So this is how we implemented our proof of concept and we'll go over that and actually have some video on that later. Any questions? You know, okay, I'm gonna speed through this. All right, so one of the things that was important to us was authentication. How do we know who's talking, right? How do we know who's conversing? So for authentication on the blockchain, we're relying on the Ethereum authentication, right? You're unlocking your wallet. You're using those secrets that are within that wallet, that private key, to send data, to send money, to send Ethereum. If you can unlock that, then you have authenticated yourself to the blockchain. And for our purposes, we said that's gonna be good enough, right? Because you're already doing that to send money back and forth. But for the data store, we had to come up with something, right? How do we know who is talking to the data store? So what we came up with was, this is our prescription pad, right? You have a prescription pad, you hand it to the physician, and they sign it. That's what we're doing. 
right? So the data store, when it is working with any one of the clients to it, whether it be a patient or a physician, they're sending them challenges. It's a challenge response authentication mechanism that's essentially saying, hey, here's something that's unique, it's a unique token from the data store, we want you to sign it with your Ethereum private key. And when it gets back, the data store looks at it and tries to verify that signature and if it can and that contract, or I'm sorry, that address verifies up against the contract that it's looking for to say yes this is the patient, yes this is the, the physician, you're good to go and it progresses forward. So that was used for authentication against the data store. The other thing that was important to us was authorization and authorization was handled at two levels. Authorization in the contract on the blockchain was baked into the contract using solidity. So you can see here we've got some modifiers to say only the patient can do certain things, only the doctor can do certain things and then we've got the in-state aspects and you've got some uh, examples on the right hand side. In-state just depicts the fact that we've got this kind of positioned out in different states where the contract is initiated by the patient and then it waits for it to be ready for the doctor and then the doctor picks it up and reviews it and then it gives it back to the patient. The patient gets it and said, yes, you reviewed my image, here's your money. So that's basically how we're doing that authorization. As far as authorization within the data store, that was based on your authentication. So it's again based on patient or physician. If you have identified yourself using the authentication mechanism we referenced in the last slide as the patient and you're trying to do something a patient should be able to do with that contract, you're authorized to do it. All right, so how did we keep those images secure on the data store? This is basically a summary of what we did. This is a, a specific implementation of a Lipric Curve integrated uh, encryption scheme, or ECIES. What we're doing is we're taking that Ethereum private key data on the left hand side for the patient and the doctor, and we're creating elliptic curve keys, basically saying let's create pubs from the, the private key data that you have, and we're going to share the public keys via the data store. Again, that's authenticated back to say, are you the patient? Okay, then you get the doctor's public key. Are you the doctor? Okay, then you get the patient's public key, specifically for that contract. The public keys are exchanged via the data store and then those are used for ECDH or elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman key exchange, right? So we're going to take that and we're going to generate a shared secret that now the patient and the doctor have. That shared secret is used as output from the ECDH or elliptic curve Diffie-Hellman blocks to throw into an AES key derivation function and the salt that we're using to make it unique for each exchange is the contract address from Ethereum. That then will result in equal AES keys on each side. So the doctor has an AES key, the patient has an AES key, they're the same but they never exchange it in the first place. So these are the stages that the contract will go through. The patient will initiate it, the patient will stage everything, put the data out there, say it's ready for the doctor, the doctor can then accept the contract and get everything ready to be able to, you know, exchange those public keys. Once the public keys are exchanged, then the patient can upload the file and in the encrypted format and then it can be downloaded by the doctor, reviewed, put back up there and then the patient can say yes this is completed, I got back the advice from the doctor. There's also a stage for abortion. Um, if we get to a point where the patient ha has put a contract out there and it has not been accepted, for example if I put something out there and I didn't mean to or I put it out there and the value is too high or I want to decrease it, you can just nix the contract altogether. But it has to be in a non-accepted uh, state and it has to be done by the patient. And we've got some details in this for all, everything I just said that I'm just going to skip past because I said it already. All right, challenges. Okay, so it's changing quickly. Um, that could wreck all the code that Peter's already written. Sorry. <laughs> uh, there, are, there are privacy concerns. Um, just like any, any system, the, the end users can still take a picture of something and put it on the internet. I, we don't know how to fix that, so we can't really solve that problem. Um, additionally, de-identifying some of this, this data may prove impossible. Uh, moral and ethical as well. Uh, this is something that Peter and I discussed uh, at length for about ten minutes over a few beers. Um, <laughs> this same construct could be used to share some really bad stuff uh, and it would be completely anonymous and it would be completely uh, secure. So you could do murders for hire, I'll let you speculate on everything else you could do over that. Um, 
Finally, how do I know you're a real doctor? If you lose your token once it's been issued or if it's stolen from you, well, it's, we don't know that you're talking to a real doctor anymore. Um, and then finally, uh, well, two more things. So you do, we're not sure what's going to happen with this. The gas, when we priced it a few days ago, was just a few cents. The physician would pay a few cents to get into the network, um, which is no big deal. But we don't know what the future is going to hold with that. So if Vitalik Buterin's around, does anyone know if he's around? I'd like to talk to him. I'm totally serious. I'd love to have, sit down, you know. Is he 21 yet? <laughs> um, and finally, speed kills. Uh, if the network isn't fast enough, your average radiologist is going to move through a scan in about two minutes. Um, if they can't do that in that sort of time with this network, uh, it's, it's pointless. They'll just go back to a PAX system. Uh, slide. Next step. So what we want to do, um, we, we need to automate more of this and it needs to be, um, I'm not sure what you meant by checks and balances. Oh, I did. So, <laughs> yeah. right now, so right now, we don't have some of the checks that I'd like to do. I'd like to do some of those things to say, okay, um, you know, where is the state of the contract with respect to what you're doing at the data store, right? So, if you're trying to download an image and it isn't actually at that state on the the data or on the blockchain, it'll all error out. But I'd like to tighten that up. Yeah. Thanks, Pedro. Um, so we need to also credential physicians. How much time do we have? A minute or two? Okay, cool. Um, so this is the hard part. If anyone knows any companies that can do this for us, we'd love to know. Um, because once they're credentialed, I mean, that's it. We don't have any way to sort of police them. We need to know that they are who they say they are, that they have gone to this residency or have had this medical training. Uh, User-friendly interface right now, um, there's maybe three people in this room who would know how to do this uh, on this system. Um, so we're going to need to make this interface with a browser of some sort or an app. Uh, if anyone can do that, let us know afterwards. Uh, monetization, uh, we do, we would like to monetize it. I mean, I don't, I don't think we're looking to make crazy profits on this, but there's a few different ways we could do it, but we want to do it in a way that we're not a third party. It would have to be the sort of thing where the contract is already fulfilled and everyone's happy and then somehow in some sort of, you know, subcontract or something, we're paid afterwards. We're not exactly sure how we're going to do that yet. Um, the rating system, already discussed, go live on Ethereum. We haven't done this yet, uh, so we still technically don't know if this will work end to end because it hasn't been done uh, on the live network. Okay, uh, I hope we left time for questions. Let's get the demo going. This is really terrible, terrible graphics. I'm so, so sorry about this. Let's see if we can zoom in. How do you Mac zoom in? Mac zoom in. We have time for about two or three questions so we can throw in during. Yeah, and we can make this available afterwards. This is just a video, it's unfortunately grainy. Um, what this is, and as we sped this up, this is a video of the interaction on the top of an end-to-end -end script. The problem with uh, actually doing this you know, in person is it's something where I would do something as a patient, doctor would do something. I would do something as a patient, doctor would do something. And that's actually gonna take hours and hours. Plus the blockchain has to mine everything to verify all the transactions. So, so my question is, have you thought of running, uh, instead of using public blockchain, you can you use a private blockchain, let's say based off on a proof of authority consensus, mm -hmm. or similar to oracles.org project that they're trying to do? Um, have you thought of this approach? Because it's a green mining, nobody has to, it's like a simplified proof of stake. Yeah. Yeah. So what he said was right now we're using a private blockchain and it's working. Um, we do want to push it out to a public blockchain just to make it so that it's readily available. It's monetized right there. It's money, right? People pay. Right. People pay in the money. Yeah, we can do very bad things with this blockchain. So okay. we want to make sure that it's verified by other people. We want to make sure that it's money that people can get, that the you know, radiologists can do this thing, they get their Ethereum, and they get it out of Coinbase or whatever they need to do. All right. Last question. Last question. OK. Um, so I see you guys aren't really storing um, patient information, but you are s storing encrypted image data, yes. which may be certain what patient information. Um, would HIPAA? apply here? Are you taking that into consideration that you'd be legally 
required to do certain things according to hip hop. Yeah, yeah, why don't you take this one? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. Enjoy. Be, no, because because this is this in this case in all the scenarios we we are putting up here, it's the patient uploading this. With your medical records, you can do whatever you want. Um, now, going forward, we would need to get some sort of HIPAA certification for this. I don't know that it would be a huge problem because once this stuff is encrypted, it it's there in the data store, well, and it's HIPAA just has there. very strict regulations of how you store it, oh, and how familiar. you audit the server, and how I've, you do everything. I violated it a few times. I'm familiar with it. Um, <laughs> yeah, enjoy the fines. <laughs> um, yes, there are, there are heavy fines. Um, so no, we, we see this starting off as a, a poor man's second opinion to begin with. Um, you were, that would be outside the bounds of HIPAA. But you're right, going forward, that, that would be a problem and a concern. And not one we're really that worried about, because when you start talking about auditability, this is the public ledger, right? This is the blockchain. So now yeah, we kind of know where everything's store transiting. Is your data store. So the data store also supports all kinds of logging that we can do with that. It's something that we could achieve. I'm not that concerned about it. But to get to the point where we were proof of concept and it was actually moving data back and forth in an encrypted fashion, we did not achieve HIPAA compliance today. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, cool. Thanks, guys. Oh.